subtracting mixed numbers and borrowing. Sometimes when you subtract mixed numbers there's no problems you just do your normal subtraction of fractions and you find common denominators. In this case the common denominator is going to be 6. So now we rewrite the problem as 9 and 5 6 minus 1 and 3 6. So you subtract the whole numbers 9 minus 1 is 8 and then 5 6 minus 3 6 is 2 6. 2 6 can be simplified to 1 3rd. So the answer is 8 and 1 3rd. 2 and 1 3rd minus 1 and 5 6. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult and you'll see that when we find common denominators. So we want a common denominator of 6 and we'll rewrite this now as 2 and 2 6 minus 1 and 5 6. Now here is why this problem is more difficult than the last one. If you look at the numerators, we have 2 minus 5. And 2 minus 5, or 2 6 minus 5 6, is negative. And we don't really want that negative in our answer, and we have to figure out what to do with it anyway. So one way to get around this is to use borrowing. So we're going to borrow 1 from this 2. And, and then we look at the denominator of 6 and make a new fraction called 6 over 6, which is equal to the 1 that we just borrowed, plus the 2 6. Now let's add the 6 6 plus the 2 6 so that this looks a little bit cleaner. And we have 1 and 8 6 minus 1 and 5 6. And now you can see that when we subtract there won't be any borrowing issues. We can definitely do 8 over 6 minus 5 over 6. And the 1 minus 1 whole is 0 whole. So the answer is just 3 6. And remember to simplify. 3 6 is the same as a half. Now borrowing uses the idea that if you cut up your whole into let's say four pieces and you eat or have all of those four pieces, that one whole is equal to four out of four. The numerator is the same as the denominator. So three out of three, 17 out of 17, 120 out of 120 are all equal to one whole. Here we have six and three tenths minus three and a half. We still make sure that we have common denominators when we add and subtract mixed numbers. And the common denominator in this case is 10. So it's 6 and 3 tenths minus 3 and 5 tenths. Again, 3 tenths minus 5 tenths is going to give us a negative. So we need to borrow again. We take from the 6 and that becomes 5. And then we make 10 tenths out of the one that we just borrowed. And then we have the 3 tenths still. And then we take away the 3 and 5 tenths. Let's clean up this first part a little bit. The 10 tenths plus the 3 tenths can be added together so that we have 5 and 13 tenths. Then we can subtract the 5 whole minus the 3 whole is equal to 2 whole. And then 13 tenths minus 5 tenths is 8 tenths. Make sure that you simplify if necessary. And the answer is going to be 2 and 4 fifths. 9 and 1 ninth minus 8 and a half. Got to find common denominators first, and the common denominator is 18. So now with common denominators, we have 9 and 2 eighteenths minus 8 and 9 eighteenths. And you got to see that we have to borrow again. 2 eighteenths minus 9 eighteenths would be negative. All right, so we need to borrow. The 9 is going to become an 8, and the one that we borrowed is an 18 over 18. And then let's just add that up right away onto the 2 18ths. So we have 8 and 20 18ths minus 8 and 9 18ths. 8 minus 8 is 0. So there's no whole number. And then 20 18ths minus 9 18ths is 11 18ths.